Well, I'm the only one bringing up papers. I'm the only one who needs notes, evidently. Um, so I'll explain that first. So for those of you that know me, some of you work with me, I have some of my team out there. I always tell them there's like five voices going on inside my head, so I never know where I'm gonna go. So anytime I get off center, I use my notes to bring me back on, and you'll see throughout this 15 minutes that I'm not exaggerating. Um, really what I wanted to talk to everybody about was, it is a 90-year-old company that I'm working for right now, Allstate, um, deep-rooted culture. But what's gonna go up on the slides is not just about Allstate, it's about, I'd say, every place I've ever worked. And if you know my background, huge financial institution, two or three of those. Uh, huge online payment institution, even though it was a, in Silicon Valley, it was still a 15-year-old company. They all suffer from this, right? The lack of a platform to drive change. And then comes along Cloud Foundry, right? PCF, great platform for a technologist, but even better for somebody that wants to change an industry and change the way a company thinks. Um, kind of a scary conversation internally at Allstate, mainly because we started this journey with a small team, internal team, talking about how to drive business as a technology, not let business drive the technology. And for 90 years, Allstate's made money did very well, they're on an upward trend, they're seeing growth for the first time, for the last five years, for the first time for a five year cycle. Stock's higher than it's ever been, so you sit back with business and say, guess what, we gotta disrupt this whole thing and tear it up. It's a hard argument, right? We're gonna go to technology driven products, we're going to change the way you think, the way that you deliver, you're gonna sit right next to the developers, we're gonna give you a platform to do proof of concept real time, to sit there and live the life of the customer. No longer are you doing a waterfall approach. No longer are you waiting six months to launch products. You're gonna conceive the product on a Monday and launch it on a Friday, right? That usually took nine months at best. So a tough argument, especially when you're making money and the stock's higher than it's ever been. So here's the history, right? It's a good story. It's a great story, actually. And by the way, that's half the story. There's a whole claim side of the house. We do 18,000 claims a day. That's not on the chart. We actually have the largest roadside assistance program, the second largest in the United States behind AAA. So the numbers are huge. The business is growing in every aspect, not just core insurance products. But we need to change. Why? Because everybody's gonna disrupt the insurance industry hasn't been disrupted in 80 plus years. Again, go back. We need the platform to do it. I've talked to a lot of my peers that have been with Allstate way longer than me, and you get into this dialogue of, we've always done it this way. It's been proven, makes money, stocks at $70. It's a great argument, right? Google's in 40 states now, I think. They can actually aggregate insurance. 18 months ago, they weren't in any, right? This is going to be disrupted. This industry is going to see an Uber-like disruption at the speed and pace that we can't react. So we go out and find a platform to help us deliver something that in the past, we never could have, right? If you take a look at this, and I did say it's saying all stayed up there, you can say this about any enterprise that I've ever worked with or been a part of, right? This is the culture of about 90% of those, and I'm sure some of you are in them, right? They look back, it's a, la it's a tough word, lack of ownership, but it's everybody owns, but nobody's really accountable, right? You have 16 sign-offs to do anything, whether that's a financial approval or a technology approval. They have huge engineering boards that get together, architecture boards. They all talk about what to do. We changed all of that. We made decisions, I don't know, it's probably been about six months ago, to go down this pivotal Cloud Foundry route. And by the way, we went down the Cloud Foundry route, and as we were, my boss said, you need to also change all development methodology. So as an infrastructure-focused technologist, 
me and my team now run the change of the developer methodology on the platform because we saw the capabilities that the platform could enable, not only deliver in our services, but product for the business. And looking at the way the team embraced it and delivered it in such a short period of time, making technology the business, he put us over top of actually development, not infrastructure development, not frameworks. These are development labs. We're pounding out code for the business now on our platform. It's a little different model. We changed a lot of models, by the way. Um, I'm not going to speak to every one of these bullets. The one that I will did, I already did, I will point out strong aversion to risk. Right? You have an entire company that is run by actuaries, basically. So everything has this huge formula behind it. And I'm, I'm serious, everything that you do. And you're trying to predict every, every possible scenario, and there's always the one that stands up in the room and says, well, what about, right? To get the decision sent all the way back to square one, um, how we deliver things. So it is a very risk-adverse company at this point in time. But we're driving change. This is our process today. This is how we deliver technology. By the way, the best case is probably 90 days. I got some of my team right here, they'll keep me honest. The best case is probably 90 days. Average is 180 or so. And that's to get the technology delivered, not the product, not the business product. That's a workable environment that somebody's pounding out code. We plan on taking that down from quarters or months, days to minutes. We've already proven we can. Stood up Pivotal Cloud Foundry in a lab pretty much the same day that we brought it in. Wrote the Hello World app. Got that in front of everybody. Stood up on stage when we brought it in in front of leadership, including business leadership, showing them that we can provision an environment in 15 minutes from zero to 15, to zero to everything in 15. Now it's what do you put on top of that? Who el what else are you gonna enable with that kind of power? And how are you gonna get them to think different? Because you're gonna transition a little. This is the other side of my, those voices going on. Technology's cool. It's great. Cloud Foundry does what they say it's going to do. You have to have the people in and around it to believe in it and deliver on top of it. And you have to change every single process. 85 years plus of process built in the, into an institution to basically stop that and make it slower. Don't go to 15 minutes. Make sure that somebody makes a decision before you go to the next phase. Make sure you have 16 people in to make a decision to go to the next phase. And we're saying we want to empower a developer to hit a button, deploy it, sit with a product manager, and have a viable, minimal viable product up and running within five to seven days. The insurance industry is interesting because you could do things state by state. Imagine if you can release a product that you thought of on a Monday into one state that Friday. That would change the industry because right now it waits to get all 50 states approval. That could take a year. Right? Now, I'm not telling you guys anything. No, you, all, you all have insurance, you know. The pain the customer sees opening the policy and the paperwork you have to go through and everything else, right? We're trying to change that. It'd be nice for one, one button on a mobile phone, but you need the platform. So we're getting rid of that. Why? I think I talked a little bit about it, right? Cost is not necessarily the focus. Right? I think there's a lot of people get caught up in when you're delivering a platform like this, you're delivering it looking at cost. Cost is going to fall out, uh, my, my opinion, cost is going to fall out the back end. The way we justified our proof of concept, for lack of a better term, it's probably the most expensive proof of concept I've ever been involved in. We sort of jumped in all with both feet and decided to skip the proof of concept phase and went straight to we're gonna do this. We're gonna sort of tear the Band-Aid off and just go. Um, I sold it to the executives at the table that our developers are inefficient. And if the developer's inefficient, 
by not, but not their own cause, right? They go to meetings, it's just our culture. You go to a meeting, they plan it. They're not pounding out code. They're not doing anything. They don't have a platform to provision. They come in, they wait a month before they can actually do anything because go back to that one screen, don't really go back to it. That one screen takes 90 days to get an environment to work. Now I get them working the same day within 15 minutes because we can do push button deploy. They can come in and do it themselves. If they do it wrong, they can blow it away. They can rebuild. We put the power in the developer's hands. The ripple effect of that is changing the methodology now since we have a platform. We get the developer working different. We get testing done different, right? Test-driven development. I don't have a huge group of testers anymore. Well, won't, right? They'll go down the path of testing. Right? Then you get into not only the testing side of the house, you take a look at everything. By the way, that delivery of the services took me 11 PMs to run that, just to process. Right? Platform enables me to eliminate all the inefficiencies that I have buried in an 85-year-old company. The other side of it is risk. Gets rid of delivery risk. You have everybody sitting at the table that you need to deliver what you need the first time and as quickly as possible and fix forward. There's no longer defects making it in all the way up through into production at the rate that they were. You get, you get uh, what do I want to say? You get an iterated, iteration that you can fix forward more quickly, right, to eliminate the risk. There's not a risk of missing deadlines anymore, right? Again, small portion of the portfolio right now. And I mentioned the time. Time equates to money usually, and it'll fall out of the back end. Here's the journey, which is interesting. Take the, take the technology aside for right now. In an 85-year-old company, to be able to deliver what we're talking about, in the time that we're talking about, that, I gotta figure this out, that'd be the left side for you guys. The left side of that screen, is the old, you know? That's what everybody doesn't like to call the legacy. That, by the way, that's 85 to 90 percent of the money that we're making right now sits in that old process, and we're trying to shift it to the right to build quick, deliver fast, higher quality, right? More efficient across the board from the infrastructure up. So there's some kind of operating model here where we're starting to test. I've already sort of ripped the cover off of it with my organization. We went into a bimodal or trimodal organization where I have one side of my organization watching the left side of that chart, one side watching the right. We're currently, we just reorganized a week and a half ago. We're in talks of do we have to put somebody in between to do some kind of open API or something that we can actually mask the old and present it as services to the news, and now do we need a third organization? In the organization announcement, it basically said just get used to it. This is a snap the line. We're going to change again very soon, so be comfortable with that. It's that same kind of approach that the entire enterprise needs to take on. Right? I think this morning, what was it? Um, Agile, Scrum, Fall. I feel like that's where we are right now, and we're still talking about how to get out of that. The good news is we've now delivered process in the infrastructure delivery teams and around architecture and around approvals to deliver higher up in the platform capabilities through Cloud Foundry at a much more rapid pace. So we're starting to show the rest of the organization what the potential is. And it does come with some risks. We will break things, right? So there is a com conversation on what is decentralized, what is, doesn't have so many tentacles tied into the left side of that um, legacy organization that you can deliver on a standalone platform. Right? Again, don't forget we have roadside assist. We have other products other than insurance. So we can go out and iterate on them, learn, change the process, change the delivery mechanisms, and go from there. Key message. 
large organization slow to progress. It's not a key message. That's, that's the challenge, really. We're trying to get rid of that. We're trying to bring everything through a technology platform and have everybody look at it and say, why can't I do my job that way? I forget where I was earlier. We were talking about how do you change the rest of the process. I made the presentation to a technology group, the business, and all of our support organizations. In the first two minutes of the presentation, legal stood up and compliance stood up and said, we can't do any of that. And I said, well, we have an hour plan. My job here is done. Because you saying that tells me that you completely understand what we're trying to do. And your process needs to change. And we were done. Presentation over. Now they're calling me saying, how do I get involved? How do I change? It, if you think about the financial approval process that sits in front of almost everything that at least we do, and I'm sure all of you feel it, it's not at all in place to react to anything like this. Right? We do roadside assist. We only do roadside assist in North America right now. That's only because we're a North America insurance company. We could take that anywhere. We could go global overnight. Why wouldn't we? Think of the scale of that. We couldn't scale today to that. We have no ability to do that. We could do it in every single country around the world tomorrow. And we're an inhibitor. Not anymore, right? That excuse is gone. We now have the platform. We can do it. Now it's the business. It's not us. We get to sit with the business, tell them we have the capability. We've proven it. We've shown it. We have two apps going live on the platform here in the next month or so. We've even shown them that we can develop with a new methodology. So now the ball's in their court. So now we get to drive the business as a technology company, not an old insurance company driven by actuaries. So that was our goal. Um, I'm not going to go through any of these. The one, the, there's two, two key points here. The 100 days down to minutes, right? We've shown that capability twice, right? I've seen it done. That, in a developer's hands, is what Cloud Foundry gives us. And as we build more services and bring in from the community more services and capabilities, that empowers not only the developers, it empowers the business into new businesses, into new countries, into new capabilities. So the excitement for us working at an old insurance company is we get to go to battle with just about any company in the world with 10 billion miles of data from driving from people driving around here. We have more data than we need, and we can drive new industries and not only change the insurance industry. With that, I appreciate everybody listening, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Fantastic. Appreciate it.